Right now, something the size of Manhattan, an interstellar object called 3I Atlas, is racing through our solar system, triggering NASA's planetary defense alerts and a scientific scramble. Michio Kaku just broke his silence. If this object gets an energy boost as it swings behind the sun, it could be our first evidence of intelligent life guiding a probe past Earth. Why are officials being so secretive, and what could happen if this object defies the laws of physics? The real test is only days away. Newsrooms are flooded with urgent calls. Emails marked high-priority stack up in the inboxes of planetary defense teams. The host's voice cuts through the noise. This isn't a drill, and it's not the usual internet rumor. In the last 24 hours, top astronomers have been pulled from conferences and observatories across three continents. The International Asteroid Warning Network, usually reserved for near-Earth threats, has gone into round-the-clock monitoring mode. NASA's own Planetary Defense Coordination Office issued an internal memo. All available assets to track C-2025N1. Atlas. Immediate data relay requested. Social media surges with speculation, but inside the science community, there's a different kind of tension. A senior astronomer in Pasadena tells a reporter, this is the most unusual object we've tracked since Oumuamua. Another, speaking off record, says, if you're not at your scope tonight, you're missing history. The host insists, this is not clickbait, not a recycled AI fake. The real physicists are talking and they're not hiding their alarm. Michio Kaku, who's usually measured in his public statements, has gone on record to say, if this object accelerates in a way we can't explain, we have to consider the possibility of technology. In labs and control rooms, the scramble is real. Observatory directors in Hawaii, Chile, and the Canary Islands have rescheduled time slots, bumping approved projects to focus on the interstellar visitor. The Minor Planet Center in Cambridge logs dozens of new astrometric submissions every hour, each measurement a piece of the puzzle. Even amateur astronomers are being asked to submit raw images and time-stamped observations, hoping to catch any sign of a sudden course change or unexplained flare. The language in official updates keeps shifting. Early bulletins called 3i slash Atlas. A comet, 100%. Now releases hedge with words like object, candidate, or visitor. The host points out how rare this is. NASA rarely changes its language mid-crisis unless something truly unexpected is unfolding. The word from inside is simple. No one wants to get caught flat-footed repeating the dismissals from the Umamua days. Not when the stakes could be this high. The host's own phone is ringing non-stop. One researcher texts, If this thing pulls an Oberth, the world will know by Thursday. Another writes, I've never seen so many senior people this rattled. There's a sense of electricity, a live wire urgency. The object is about to swing behind the sun, and for the next 48 hours, the world's best instruments will be nearly blind. The question is, when it comes back into view, what will we see? And will anyone be allowed to show it? Atlas. First picked up the object in early July, flagged by a string of automated alerts as it streaked in from the direction of Lyra. Astronomers at Mauna Loa and Halakala watched the data come in, at first suspecting another routine comet. But the numbers refused to line up. Its orbit was hyperbolic, meaning it was moving too fast to be bound to the sun. That alone placed it in rare company. Only two other interstellar objects, Oumuamua and Borisov, have ever been confirmed inside our solar system. Initial brightness estimates triggered a flurry of headlines. Early press releases compared its size to Manhattan, but those were based on the glowing coma, not the true nucleus. Hubble's imaging later narrowed the core to somewhere between 320 meters and 5.6 kilometers across, almost certainly smaller than the city block analogy suggested. Most recent measurements point toward the lower end of that range, but the uncertainty is real. A solid, icy heart wrapped in a vast cloud of gas and dust impossible to separate cleanly from Earth's distance. As the days ticked by, the Atlas team and their partners logged a growing list of oddities. The object's light curve flickered in a way that hinted at non-standard rotation, possible tumbling, or a shape more complex than a simple ball of ice. 
Spectral data from the Very Large Telescope and Hubble revealed something stranger. Strong emission lines for atomic nickel, but not iron. On Earth, those signals usually mean the presence of rare, volatile nickel compounds, like nickel carbonyl, that don't appear in most solar system comets. The presence of nickel without iron, especially at such a distance from the Sun, defied easy explanation. Meanwhile, outgassing started early. Most comets wait until they're much closer to the Sun before they flare with activity, but Three-Eyed Atlas was already shedding gas and dust at more than three astronomical units out. The composition of the gas, rich in carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, set it apart from familiar visitors. A cyanide cloud stretched nearly 180,000 kilometers across, and the dust tail trailed over 100,000 kilometers behind. The rates of cyanide and dust production climbed sharply as the object approached the inner solar system, tracked by both ground and space telescopes. Amid these findings, rumors and speculative lists began to circulate. Claims of 15 anomalies, each more dramatic than the last. But the official record is more measured. Scientists agree on the interstellar trajectory, the nucleus size uncertainty, the early and intense outgassing, and the nickel signature as the core mysteries. Other reported anomalies, course changes, radio emissions, or sudden disappearances remain unconfirmed by peer-reviewed data. The result is a catalog of oddities that resists easy classification. Each new measurement adds to the sense of unease among the teams watching the object. The Atlas survey's discovery and the evidence piling up since have forced planetary defense authorities to treat Three-Eyed Atlas as more than a scientific curiosity. The object's path and behavior demand attention, and the world's best instruments are now focused on what happens next. Inside NASA's headquarters, the lights never went off. On October 27th, the Planetary Defense Coordination Office convened a late-night session pulling in leads from the International Asteroid Warning Network. The call wasn't just routine, it was a global alert, routed to observatories in North America, Europe, Asia, and the Southern Hemisphere. The subject line in the meeting minutes, Unprecedented Interstellar Object, C-2025 N1 Atlas, Immediate Tracking and Contingency Planning. Within hours, a formal coordination bulletin went out across the IAWN. It listed specific demands, continuous astrometric tracking, rapid reporting of any sudden changes in brightness, and high-cadence imaging during every possible window. Observatory directors were instructed to prioritize the object over scheduled research. Even the Minor Planet Center, usually a clearinghouse for asteroid data, was tasked with compiling and verifying every sighting every anomaly as fast as they arrived. The procedures were clear. Each station was to log motion, outgassing, and any hint of fragmentation. If the object deviated by more than one arc second from its predicted path, or if its velocity changed by more than 20 meters per second, the alert level would escalate. These numbers weren't arbitrary. They matched the practical limits of what current instruments could detect thresholds set to catch anything that couldn't be explained by natural comet behavior. International partners joined the effort. The European Space Agency contributed time on its deep space tracking network. The Japanese JAXA team diverted their infrared surveyors. Even ground-based amateurs from Chile to South Africa received guidance on what to watch for and how to submit raw data. In the background, the red team worked through risk scenarios ranking everything from harmless flyby to the remote chance of artificial propulsion. Inside the defense network, the tone was measured but unmistakably serious. No one wanted a repeat of the confusion that followed Oumuamua. This time, the protocols were strict. Every update cycled through secure channels, then filtered for public release. The phrase, out of an abundance of caution, appeared in nearly every internal memo. For the first time since the network's founding, a confirmed interstellar object was being treated as a possible risk, not just a scientific oddity. The world's best surveillance systems were now locked on, waiting for the moment 3i slash Atlas would reappear from behind the sun. Solar conjunction changes everything. For nearly two weeks, 3i slash Atlas slips behind the sun from Earth's perspective, vanishing into the glare. Ground-based telescopes are blind. Even the most powerful optical arrays can't pierce the solar haze. 
Observatories that tracked every flicker and outburst are forced to wait, their data streams interrupted by geometry, not by choice. In this blackout, the only eyes left belong to solar observatories, spacecraft like SOHO and STEREO, built to watch the sun, not to track interstellar objects. Their instruments catch fragments of light and motion, but the cadence and sensitivity are nothing like what's possible from Earth or deep space telescopes. As October 29th approaches, the world's best planetary defense systems are effectively flying blind. This window of invisibility isn't just an inconvenience, it's a vulnerability. In a moment when every data point matters, when a single unexplained motion could change the narrative, the loss of direct observation invites suspicion. Some researchers warn that any gap in the record, whether caused by solar interference or institutional caution, could allow a critical anomaly to slip by unnoticed. The memory of Oumuamua lingers, a reminder of how quickly uncertainty can spiral when the facts are incomplete. Michio Kaku calls this the acid test. He explains that as 3i slash atlas rounds the sun, its energy and velocity can be measured with precision, if, and only if, the data are complete. The principle is simple. A natural object, obeying the laws of gravity, should leave perihelion with exactly the energy it brought in, minus losses from outgassing or dust. But if the object emerges moving faster than physics predicts, if there's a sudden, unexplained boost, that's when scientists have to consider something artificial. Kaku points to the Oberth effect, the same maneuver used by Voyager and other spacecraft to gain speed from planetary flybys. For a comet, the energy gain is limited by gravity and the sun's pull. For a probe, a powered slingshot could add extra velocity, a signature of intent rather than accident. The numbers set the bar. A delta vi greater than 20 meters per second, or a trajectory offset exceeding one arc second, is well beyond what outgassing or solar pressure can explain. These are not arbitrary thresholds. They're drawn from the capabilities of current instruments and the known behavior of comets. Anything above them, measured independently by multiple observatories, would be unprecedented. Kaku's yardstick is clear. If 3i slash Atlas passes the sun and emerges with more energy than gravity alone allows, the conversation changes. Until then, every missing data point is a source of anxiety and every unexplained blackout fuels the sense that something important might be slipping through our fingers. Spectrometers locked onto 3i Atlas have delivered a chemical puzzle that's now fueling a split in the scientific ranks. The first detailed spectra, gathered by the Very Large Telescope and confirmed by Hubble, revealed an unusually strong presence of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, levels that outstrip what's seen in most solar system comets. Even more striking, the optical data showed a clear atomic nickel signal, but no iron. On Earth, that combination is rare outside of specialized chemistry labs. The leading hypothesis points to nickel carbonyl, a volatile compound that forms when nickel interacts with carbon monoxide-rich ices under low temperatures. Nickel carbonyl isn't just uncommon, it's unstable, destroyed rapidly by sunlight unless shielded deep inside ice or dust. Its release, paired with surging carbon monoxide emissions, suggests a storage and liberation mechanism that doesn't match the usual comet playbook. This is where the camps divide. On one side, mainstream comet researchers argue the chemistry is extreme but not impossible. They point to primordial nebula chemistry and interstellar grain processes. Nickel could have been trapped in carbon-rich ices, shielded from radiation, and only now released as the object heats up. Selective sputtering or the breakup of nickel-adsorbed grains might explain the absence of iron, which tends to stay locked in more refractory, heat-resistant forms. For these scientists, the oddities of 3i Atlas are a window into exotic, but still natural, chemistry from the outskirts of another star system. The other camp sees a different picture. They ask why the nickel signature appears so cleanly, and why the ratios of nickel to cyanide so closely mirror what you'd expect from controlled laboratory release, not random cosmic mixing. They note that in industrial contexts, nickel carbonyl is a hallmark of engineered processes, rarely, if ever, found in nature on this scale. For these researchers, the chemical fingerprints could be a clue that something more than random chemistry is at work. Both sides agree on the facts. 
high carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, persistent nickel vapor with no matching iron, a rapidly growing cyanide cloud, and a nucleus that remains stubbornly hard to pin down. What divides them is interpretation. The measurement criteria are now under a microscope. Every new spectrum, every tiny shift in emission lines, becomes ammunition in a debate that's as much about scientific culture as it is about the object itself. The next round of data, especially any evidence of isotopic anomalies or engineered molecules, could tip the balance, but for now, the chemical case remains open, and the arguments only grow sharper. When the object clears the sun and returns to view, the real test begins. Not just for scientists, but for anyone with a telescope and a clock. The numbers are public. A net velocity change greater than 20 meters per second, or a trajectory shift over one arc second, are the lines in the sand. These are not arbitrary. They are set by what current instruments can actually measure and by the upper limits of what natural cometry outgassing can do. Anything above those thresholds, confirmed by more than one observatory, cross-checked across continents, would be beyond the reach of known physics for a body this size. The plan is simple. As soon as 3i slash Atlas is visible again after October 29th and 30th, Backyard observers and professional teams alike will try to lock onto its position. The host has lined up a Texas collaborator with a high-powered scope, ready to stream live astrometry feeds as weather allows. If the object's path or speed jumps, even by a fraction, those numbers will show up in the data. The host encourages viewers to watch the raw numbers themselves track the right ascension and declination, compare the predicted orbit to the actual one, and see if any deviation crosses the key thresholds. This is the moment where the public can play a real role. Multiple observers posting independent measurements make it nearly impossible for any single agency to quietly suppress an anomaly. If a sudden boost happens, if the delta V spikes past 20 meters per second, or the track slips more than an arc second, those results will be impossible to ignore. As for the host's own position, he doesn't expect a Hollywood ending. He's not predicting an invasion or even a message, but he refuses to rule out the possibility that 3i slash Atlas could be something more than just another comet. The only honest approach is to watch the numbers, keep the process transparent, and let the data decide. The verdict, he says, belongs to everyone who's willing to look. As of October 30th, 2025, 3i slash Atlas became the third confirmed interstellar object to pass through our solar system, with a nucleus up to 5.6 kilometers across and at least 15 reported anomalies. NASA and the International Asteroid Warning Network activated planetary defense protocols, calling on worldwide observatories to track its path through perihelion. Despite extensive optical and spectroscopic monitoring, key data, like confirmed velocity changes over 20 meters per second or astrometric offsets greater than one arc second, remain inconclusive, partly due to the object's passage behind the Sun. Official documents and public releases continue to shift in their language, reflecting uncertainty. While no evidence has proven 3i slash Atlas is artificial, scientists have not accounted for all its unusual chemical and orbital signatures. The question of intelligence remains open. For now, 3i slash Atlas stands as a rare test of our ability to detect the unexpected. The final answer, as the physicist Michio Kaku noted, depends on what the next wave of transparent, verifiable data will reveal.